Welcome to Grassroot Ohio, conversations with everyday people working on important issues here in Columbus and all around Ohio. I'm Carolyn Harding, and today I'm talking with Mia Lewis, Associate Director of Common Cause Ohio and a leader of Indivisible Ohio District 12. She comes from an organizing and educational background and is passionate about protecting and expanding the right to vote. As activists, we're always looking for the answer, the sil silver bullet, the fix, and we both know there's no such thing when it comes to voting. Gerrymandering is the blatant blockade to fair democratic elections. Mia, you spent a great deal of time and energy organizing to end Ohio's in-your-face gerrymandering. Is there an answer, a silver bullet, a fix to end this discrimination? No, there is not. Although um, the maps that have been drawn, uh, the maps that were drawn this year um, that are bad maps um, have been challenged in court. And so, you know, uh, perhaps the court will rule that these maps need to be redrawn and that would be something of a, of a silver bullet. So we do have our fingers crossed for that. Um, there are multiple cases. There's two sets of maps. There's the Ohio state legislative maps. That's the Ohio House and the Ohio Senate. And then there's the US congressional maps. There are three lawsuits each uh, for the legislative maps and for the congressional maps. Um, oral arguments were heard for the legislative um, map challenges this morning. Um, and um, congressional, we don't actually know if there will be oral arguments for congressional maps. They don't, all, they don't have to have oral arguments. The lawyers submit their briefs and the justices um, look them over. So um, for both legislative and congressional maps, um, we're looking at um, some action from the court sometime in the next couple of months. And when you're talking about court, is this the uh, Ohio Supreme Court? Yes, it's the Ohio Supreme Court. So unfortunately, um, a couple of years ago, the United States Supreme Court decided that it couldn't do anything about gerrymandering, that it, it, it didn't, you know, that even though gerrymandering was bad, um, they, they weren't able to, you know, it was kind of out of their purview. Now, that was Chief Justice Roberts. It was a 5-4 decision in Rusha versus Common Cause. Um, and obviously, that was extremely disappointing. And many people disagreed with um, the reasoning. Um, uh, you know, I would say that the some of the dissents were very powerful, and I would have hoped that you know they would have ruled a different way, and perhaps in the future under a different court they will will change that because clearly um, we we do have a way of determining when someone's vote has been someone's been deprived of their full voting power. Um, there are plenty of ways to determine that, and there's no reason really why the Supreme Court shouldn't um, say that you know we need the equal power to have our votes count but for whatever reason that's what they decided so um so everything is being decided by um the ohio supreme court i will clarify that a little bit so for political gerrymandering that goes straight to the ohio supreme court however we still have in place um federal law about um racial gerrymandering so if you've basically deprived um minority voters African-American voters or other minority voters of their ability to elect a representative of their choosing, that contravenes the Voting Rights Act, which is federal law, and that still can go to a federal court and then could go up to the Supreme Court. Okay, Mia, um, some people don't really know what gerrymandering is. It's an, it's an interesting name. I think it comes from some legislator or somebody's name, but um, can you give us a nutshell what gerrymandering is and why it's so bad in Ohio? Sure, gerrymandering is cheating. It's cheating, it's cheating, it's cheating, it's cheating. Gerrymandering is, you know, saying you're playing a game of football and you're gonna put the 50 yard line at somebody's 10 yard line so that one team only has to move 10 yards and the other team has to move 90 yards. Or it's putting a basketball hoop 10, 10 feet for one and 15 feet for another. Basically what gerrymandering is, is when um, the people who have the power to draw congressional or legislative districts use that power 
to draw them in a manipulated way, which increases the power of their voters and diminishes the power um, of other voters, uh, of their opposition voters. And they do that by two things, that packing and cracking. Now, what packing is, is you take lots and you take as many of your opposition voters as you can, and you squeeze them into one district. So let's say here in District 3, Joyce Beatty is a Democratic uh, Congresswoman. Well, let's get as many Democrats into that district as we possibly can, instead of maybe spreading them out over two districts so that you'll just have one Democratic Congressperson instead of being able to have two Congress people. So that's packing. Cracking is what I have in District 12, where you take a bunch of Democratic voters and you, you put a little bit into this Republican district and a little bit into that Republican district and a little bit in that Republican district. So they have no possibility ever of being able to win that election and, and, and win the vote that they want. So for example, right now, the map that was just created takes the Democratic and African-American voters of Cincinnati um, and Hamilton County, and it, it takes them and it adds it puts a, a bunch of them in one Republican county together with one Republican county, a bunch of them with another Republican county, and a bunch of them with another Republican county. So you'll end up with three Republican Congress people instead of one Democratic congressperson. So that's cracking and packing, and that's what gerrymandering is. And the reason that it's bad, well, there's a lot of reasons that it's bad. One, it's just unfair, and it gives an unfair advantage to one party over another. Two, it it, what it does is it, because it has politicians picking their voters instead of the other way around, it creates these completely 100% predictable outcomes. For example, the congressional map in Ohio, uh, as far as Democrat, Republican, it's, um, I think there've been something like 81 contests from 2012 until now. And it's 100% of the time it has done what it was drawn to do. It's given the R districts to the Rs and the D districts to the Ds. There's been no change. So it's 100% predictable. And when it's really predictable, then people don't want to bother to vote. Um, they get very, you know, they're like, why should I bother? And then also the politicians say, well, I don't really need that voter in order to win. I know I'm going to win. So I don't really care. I'm not going to pay attention. I literally had Pat Tiberi sit across the table from me and say, hey, I, you know, I Trump won by 67%. So I really don't think I need to pay attention to what you're telling me because I know I can get elected anyway. Um, that's one thing that happens. So the primary becomes the most important race. If you know the result of the general election, then it's really just a question of who is going to be in the general election. So the primary is the most important. And what happens when primaries are the most important races is that um, you people kind of play to the extremes. So they're, you know, they're trying to out the the Republican voters are trying to get more and more conservative. Democratic voters are trying to get more and more um, liberal. And then you end up with people who are being elected who don't know how to compromise, don't know how to represent everyone in their district, and they're just kind of playing to the extremes. And then you then you basically get dysfunctional government. And you get things like what we have now in Ohio, where, um, if for example, let's talk about something like gun safety. You know, 90% of Ohioans think that we should have some background checks. And what does the Ohio legislature do? They give us um, stand your ground and uh, permitless carry and guns in schools and you know all the other things. The same for reproductive rights, the same for energy policy, the same for all of these things. It doesn't really matter what the people of Ohio want or think or care about because the legislature is just off in its own world that it is not connected to the voters because of gerrymandering. So how did we get here? How did we get where we're I have all these lawsuits going on? I thought we had a couple, you know, big changes. Um, they were ballot initiatives and changes. And so what happened? Really great question. Um, so um, lots of things happened. And um, I'm going to answer your question in several parts. Okay. So um, we 
we tried to have um, redistricting reform in Ohio for many years, starting in the 1980s. And there were a number of things that failed. Um, we tried to do um, an independent redistricting commission three times. It failed three times. And so- a ballot initiative? Those, those were ballot initiatives. Um, okay. They were on the ballot and, and they failed at the ballot. Okay. Um, so, um, so um, what happened was um, we ended up doing redistricting reform that was supposed to be a legislative fix to create bipartisan bipartisan map making, um, both for the legislature, legislature um, Ohio House and Senate maps that was in 2015, Thanks. and for the Congress, which was in 2018. Both of those went onto the ballot. They won at the ballot overwhelmingly because um, they were supported by both parties, because these were basically negotiations. So people started to collect signatures. They collected a lot of signatures. The legislature was like, okay, they're collecting a lot of signatures. Maybe we should do something. And then there was a negotiated process between Democrats and Republicans and advocates, you know, in the state house, um, and um, they created new rules which were based on um, bipartisan map making, transparency of the process, meaningful opportunity for citizens to participate, um, and then the maps were supposed to be keeping the keeping communities together, so limiting splits and counties and things like that, and there was supposed to be. Um, a guard against um, gerrymandering, against favor unduly favoring one party over another and having some form of representational fairness. Now, there's slightly different rules for the legislative maps and the congressional maps, and they're you know a little bit complicated, but the important thing is these went on the ballot. They won overwhelmingly um, in every single county in Ohio, they won. It wasn't as if it was like, you know, some people in the urban areas versus people in the rural areas. That's not what happened. Um, but then basically in a word, the majority party, the Republican party members of the Ohio Redistricting Commission and the General Assembly did not abide both by those rules or they, they basically picked and chose what rules they wanted to abide by and they kind of pretended that the rules that were against um, gerrymandering and unduly favoring one party over another that they weren't required to follow those rules. Um, so, you know, they created maps not in a bipartisan way, not in a transparent way, um, and they rammed those maps through. But in both cases, because the maps had no support from Democrats, they are four-year maps as opposed to 10-year maps. So um, we have to do all of this again in four years, uh, uh, you know, unbelievably. But in any case, those maps were all taken to court because they didn't follow the rules. What happened, and it's kind of interesting, what happened in 2011 is there were terrible maps and there was a court case saying, these are terrible gerrymandered maps. And the court said, well, there's nothing we can do about it because they're, they're, we don't have any actionable rules. And so the whole point of the redistricting reforms, the whole point of everything we did in 2015 and 2018 was to put rules in the constitution that we could use to sue. So the very, this morning where there were the oral arguments in the legislative maps, the very, very first thing that the lawyer said was, we had this whole reform process in order to put the rules in the constitution. Those rules are actionable. The Supreme Court can take action based on those new rules. And that's what they're asking them to do. They're basically asking them to say, go back and draw new maps because these ones are gerrymandered. Okay, so have the courts decided that or are they just deliberating right now? They're just deliberating and we should get an answer in, um, it, it, there's a kind of an expedited schedule because when you think about it, you know, candidates have to file, um, boards of elections have to figure out where the districts are and which districts everybody's in. There's a right. primary coming up. So everything needs to be decided absolutely for sure by the beginning of February, unless they're gonna do something like move the primary or, or something like that. So this is all in a very expedited schedule. Um, when exactly we'll get um, a ruling, I don't know. Um, okay, Mia, if um, we do, uh, the courts do say you've got to send those back, we need a fair, uh, more fair districts. Are we going to have the same commission 
making those new maps. I mean, why are there more Republicans than Democrats in that commission? That doesn't seem partisan, um, that nonpartisan. That seems like it's it's the scales are weighed weighed down towards the um, uh, Republican Party right now. And I understand that when the Democratic Party was in charge, there was gerrymandering too. So yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a party thing. It's a power thing. It's so let's go back and power thing. Yeah, let's go back and, and answer. How will these new maps be um, improved? Yeah. Well, I think the idea is that the court would say um, there's like a specific section, you know, it's section 11, um, part six, you know, they basically said we did two, three, four and sub five and seven, but we skipped six and they're going to be told, no, you have to go back and, and obey six. And what six is about is the representational fairness. It's that it's basically saying that the 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 party split has to reflect the way that Ohioans vote. And over the past 10 years in statewide elections, they've voted 54% Republican, 46% Democrats. So the, the split of, of D's and R's in our Ohio House and our Ohio Senate has to roughly reflect that. And they basically skipped that part when it when you know they drew the maps. You know, they gave some explanation which didn't make any sense, which was you know, 81% of the elections have been won by Republicans, but that doesn't actually reflect how people have voted. Um, but um, the, the reason that the commission is kind of uh, skewed is because the commission is made up of, um, it has seven members and three of them are statewide um, elected officials. So we have the governor, the secretary of state, the auditor, and then the the DNR leaders of the Senate and the DNR leaders of the House. And I think at the time that the um, rules were being written, I think folks on who were writing the rules had some hope that it wouldn't be three people from one party who were those statewide elected officials and that it would be a little bit more balanced. I don't know if you remember in 2018, um, actually, you know, when you had, you know, Rich Cordray running against Governor De DeWine and you had um, Catherine Clyde running against Frank LaRose and um, I forget who was running for auditor, um, but, you know, those were very close races. And um, so, you know, that really could have come out uh, differently. And perhaps in four years, there will be a different makeup um, of those, um, you know, statewide office holders. Um, and I also think that there was a, a sense that statewide office holders, um, they aren't gerrymandered. You can't gerrymander a statewide race because everybody in the state, there aren't, there aren't districts, everybody votes together. And that the statewide office holders would have some interest in appearing to be fair. Um, and in fact, um, we really thought that during the process that Governor DeWine, Secretary LaRose, and Auditor Faber would try to dampen down some of the gerrymandering craziness that was happening with Senator Huffman and, and Speaker Cup. And in fact, you know, they were excluded from the process. They've had said in depositions that, you know, that Huffman and Cup excluded them from the process. They've been critical of the maps. They made, you know, Frank LaRose called the maps or the reasoning for how the maps were drawn, quote, asinine. That's a quote from, from Frank LaRose, you know, and yet they voted for them. Um, you know, and I think voters should hold him accountable because, you know, he's supposed to represent all Ohioans and he's putting his thumb on the scale and saying, no, it's okay to have a gerrymandered map that benefits Republicans over Democrats. And I don't think that a secretary, of, I don't think that's appropriate for a secretary of state. A secretary of state should be representing all voters. So I, I, I definitely think we should remember that uh, when it comes to, um, you know, his reelection. Agree. This is Carolyn Harding with Grassroot Ohio. Today I'm talking with Mia Lewis, and she works for Common Cause, and she's also a organizer with Indivisible um, District 12. We're talking about gerrymandered Ohio and the fight to, for fair maps and fair districts. Um, what is the coalition Fair Districts Ohio? I I see a lot of um, I see their images on Facebook. I see actions. Kim, can you tell us who they are? Yeah, sure. So Fair Districts is um, a coalition that are, what distinguishes us from other coalitions is that um, 
you know, we are sort of fiercely nonpartisan. Um, so, um, and that doesn't mean we can't criticize one party or another when they do something wrong. It just means that we're, we don't have, our identity is separate from being, you know, beholden to any party or any party interests. So we criticize whoever does something wrong, no matter what party they're, they're in. Um, so that's Common Cause Ohio, um, the League of Women Voters, the ACLU, Ohio Council of Churches, um, uh, a Philip Randolph, um, you know, and other groups as well. Um, but that's kind of the main folks who are working together. Um, and, um, you know, the people, the groups represented in fair districts have been involved with redistricting reform in Ohio for decades and decades and decades. Um, to go back right there. Um, I was very aware when folks were um, gathering signatures for the congressional um, ballot initiative. Hi and now hindsight, do you wish you would, would have just continued and got it on the ballot and voted? It's a great question. I, I appreciate you asking that question. And I do get that question a lot. And this is the answer that I give when people ask that question. Unfortunately, in Ohio, um, you need bipartisan support for an initiative to pass at the ballot. Um, because if we had continued to collect signatures, and I was right out there with collecting signatures with, with everybody, that was you know my thing. Um, if we had done that and gotten that on the ballot, and then Republicans had come in and put a lot of money for a no vote, we would have lost that vote. And that would have been an enormous waste of time um, for everybody um, because in general terms, uh, ballot initiatives that don't have some measure of bipartisan support don't pass in Ohio. And it's much easier to get a no vote than a yes vote. Ohioans are more likely to just look at something and go, eh, I've heard I've heard this and I've heard that. And you know what, I'm just gonna vote no. Um, and, and, and that tends to be you know, what people do. So the fact that it was actually supported by both parties and both parties had it as a yes on their slate cards and both parties, including you know, Matt Huffman went around the state and said you should vote for this that is the reason that it passed and if we had kept co collecting signatures and put something on the ba ballot it's very unlikely that it would have passed um it was really the best that we had at the time does it look like a failure right now well yes it does in that the people who are responsible for carrying it out disregarded it and you know it is also possible that if we put something else on the ballot, they would disregard that as well. I mean, they're basically operating without shame. They're operating in a, you know, thanks to Trump and others are operating in a world in which um, the more brazenly you break rules, um, somehow the more, you know, the more credit you get. I mean, you know, people are doing things, people are breaking political norms in ways that we haven't seen really, um, certainly in my lifetime. And um, many of the, and many of the moderates are complicit because like uh, DeWine and LaRose on uh, favor, they voted for this gerrymandered map. They, they, they could have taken a stand they could have taken a stand, but then they have all the fallout from the extremes, from That's the right. extreme legislators and extreme um, constituents. Absolutely. And when you look at something like, um, you know, what happened in the Republican Party meeting the other day when they were trying to, um, you know, support Governor DeWine and Republicans caused so much of a, of a disturbance that they had to call the sheriffs in, you know, that's, you know, basically what's happening. So Frank LaRose is texting with his um, chief of staff and saying, you know, this is asinine. And the chief of staff writes back and says, yeah, but it's probably going to come up in court. So it, it's probably not worth you, you know, taking a stand against it. And LaRose answers, yeah, you're right. And he votes for the map. I mean, you know, all the way down the line, the moderates are responsible. They're responsible. They know better. And they are, you know, we look at, you know, somebody like um, Steve Stivers, you know, who resigned from his seat in Congressional District, Ohio Congressional District 15, and is now head of the Chamber of Car Commerce. He came out and called Ohio legislators legislative terrorists. Now, you know, I agree with that. And that's great. 
but he should have done more when he was in Congress to call this kind of behavior out and to say, you know, this is not acceptable. Same with Tiberi, same with, same with DeWine, same with, same with these guys, you know, um, it, this is not a joke, you know, our democracy is, is on the line here. Um, and so, you know, they really have to think, you know, what am I gonna say to my grandchildren? Uh, um, you know, where did I stand at this critical time for our democracy? And, you know, gerrymandering undermines our democracy. What is the, okay, so Matt Huffman's gonna have more power, the, the Republican party's gonna have more power in, in Ohio, but what, what ultimately is the consequence of that if, you know, if our faith in democracy is undermined and our ability to have a meaningful um, election is undermined? Um, it, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't add up. <laughs> no, we need, uh, we need um, champions. We need brave legislators. We need people that are, will stand for the right thing, even if there are consequences. Because, I mean, if they're not going to do it, who's going to do it? That's what um, leads me to this next question. I've seen you, uh, Mia, you're formidable um, testifying in front of Congress, have you, um, the State House. Have you ever thought about running yourself for a public office? Um, I haven't. I mean, I, I, I hate to give that answer because I really want to encourage people to run. I really think it's important. I feel like we have too many people who are standing on the sidelines um, and, and not enough people who are kind of in it. It's sort of one of those things where like, I know what I don't know. You know, you see people running for Congress who know nothing and they feel not at all ashamed about it. But I, I know enough to know all the things that I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I don't want to. Uh, and that's kind of common for women. Yes, yeah. it is. I and, know. Um, I understand exactly how you feel. People ask me. I know what my strengths are. I know that I like to get the word out. I like to connect. I like to raise awareness. Um, to be at the state house, there's a lot of very tedious and boring stuff going on, but very, very important yes. um, law being made. And we need people like you who know a lot about fair elections and um, equality in voting. And um, so if you haven't heard it very many times, you got you heard it from me. Okay. So, Think about I appreciate it. That. And I just want to say two, two other things. I want to make sure that I say, often we talk about, you know, we say the, the horrible General Assembly or the horrible Ohio House or the horrible Ohio Senate. And there are some terrible people there. But I would just, you know, even from my nonpartisan stance, I would just like to say how much I appreciate some of the Democrats who are there, who are getting up every day and getting dressed and going into an environment that is often quite unpleasant and fighting for voting rights, fighting against gerrymandering, fighting for sane um, health uh, uh, laws and regulations, fighting against gun insanity, fighting for women's uh, reproductive rights. I really do appreciate that. And their level of preparedness and the questions that they asked, their respect, you know, Senator Sykes going to every single Ohio Redistricting Commission meeting he was the only person who went to all the meetings. Most of the Republicans skipped most of the meetings, didn't even bother to show up. So I would like to say how much I appreciate their hard work. Um, I also would like to say, um, let's not let our US senators off the hook. There, there are federal ways to fix this. We have the Freedom to Vote Act. Um, you know, it's not a perfect cure, but it, it does have some provisions to lessen the harms of gerrymandering. And we wanna make sure that, that that gets passed. Okay, Mia, real quick. How can people find out more information from a, a website? Yes, um, they can go to fairdistrictsohio.org. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that I've done that right. Yes, fairdistrictsohio.org and there'll be information there. Um, and you know, people should just remember that um, stay angry, stay engaged, um, write a letter to the editor this week, next week, next month, two months from now. We don't want to forget this. You know, even if we lose this battle, we don't want to um, we don't want to normalize it. We want to make sure that people know that that was wrong and they need to be. I'm, I'm telling the army, stand at ease, but do not disband. You know, be ready for the next fight. Thank you, Mia Lewis. And uh, we will we'll learn more and we're going to continue to fight until we have fair elections, fair districts, fair maps, fair democracy. Yay. Thanks,
Thank yeah. You so much. Yeah. In addition to our Friday 5 p.m. broadcast on WGRN.org, Grassroot Ohio now airs on Sundays at 2 p.m. on WCRSFM.org, 92.7, 98.3 FM Columbus, and at 4 p.m. on WEJPLP 107.1 FM Wheeling, Moundsville, West Virginia. You can also find us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.